Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Bennett. I'm majoring in mathematics and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about non-standard analysis. Broadly speaking, non-standard analysis is the study of infinitesimal quantities and infinitely large quantities. These ideas are fairly intuitive, especially for anyone with a background in calculus. You may recall taking the limit of something as a variable goes to zero or finding the limit of a sequence as terms go infinitely far along in that sequence. The study of calculus is founded upon the notion of infinitesimal quantities and both Newton and Leibniz took their existence for granted. Eventually, the idea of the infinitesimal was cast aside in the 19th century, but it's been enjoying a comeback uh, more recently thanks to the work of Abraham Robinson in the 1960s and uh, several uh, scholars who have followed him. Whereas real analysis is concerned with the study of real numbers, non-standard analysis is concerned with the study of the so-called hyper-real numbers. The hyper-real number system contains numbers that are smaller than every real number, but not, not equal to zero. These numbers are called infinitesimals. It also contains infinitely large or unlimited numbers. And the mathematical tools that make such a number system possible are called filters, and I won't get into too many of the details here. The moral of the story is that while Newton and Leibniz took these infinitesimals for granted, uh, the idea has been made more mathematically rigorous and it allows us to work with it in a bit more mathematical good faith, so to speak. In studying non-standard analysis, it's crucial to have an understanding of filters and sequences, but when it comes down to proving things, it becomes quite cumbersome to carry these filters around. As a result, we use another mathematical tool called the transfer principle that comes from the study of logic. In short, the transfer principle states that any sentence about the real numbers is true if and only if that statement is true about the hyperreal numbers, once the sets and relations in that statement are enlarged to their non-standard enlargement. The nice thing about non-standard analysis is that once you have filters and the transfer principle up and running, and I've kind of swept it under the rug a little bit here, feel free to read my full thesis for more details. Uh, but once you have those ideas up and running, it makes it pretty easy to work within the non-standard framework, and it makes ideas about analysis and calculus very intuitive. So as you can see here, I've included three big ideas from calculus, those being continuity, uh, differentiation, and integration. And these are all kind of methods that rely on this idea of things getting arbitrarily close together in the real framework. So in the non-standard analysis framework, we say that things are getting infinitely close together. So as you can see here, a theorem about continuity is that f is continuous at a point c if and only if for all x in the non-standard numbers um, that satisfy x infinitely close to c, that implies f of x being infinitely close to f of c. And when I say x is infinitely close to c, that just means that x minus c in absolute value um, is an infinitesimal, so smaller than every real number. And you know, some more things can be said about differentiation and integration. Um, the calculus student wondering why, what dx stands for, why we're allowed to say something like dx. We don't have to worry about all the former uh, formal rigor of real analysis in justifying the Riemann integral, but instead we can just work with infinitesimals here and justify it right off the bat. And I've included two short proofs here just to demonstrate some ideas that come up in quite a bit of quite a few of these uh, non-standard analysis proofs. Um, and that idea is that if you know something about the real numbers, oftentimes you can show something about the non-standard numbers and vice versa. So in this first proof here, I know something about a uh, non-standard numbers, and I end up showing that this real-valued sequence is a Cauchy sequence. And in the second proof here, I know something about this real-valued sequence on a real-valued set A, and it tells me something else about um, the non-standard enlargement of that function and, and members of that enlarged set. And so finally, I just want to conclude that um, non-standard analysis is helpful in that it makes things pretty intuitive to work with, but at this level, we are still kind of relying on the ideas of real analysis to guide the proofs. Um, but at a higher level, and this is non-standard analysis is a field that's still developing further and further as it's quite new. Um, at the higher level, I think there are some pretty unique um, applications that don't deal directly with real analysis. And you know, the applications are varying from measure theory to probability theory to mathematical economics and beyond. So it is a, a pretty hot button issue in math these days and a lot of mathematicians are taking a look at it. And finally, I just wanna take a moment to thank uh, Dr. Harkwas for his work with me in advising this project. Um, he spent countless, countless hours with me, watched me bang my head against the wall and working through logical quantifiers and there's nobody I would have rather done it with. He was an amazing mentor. So despite all the tough circumstances of this quarter as well, 
it was a pleasure to work with him. Uh, and finally, thank you to Dr. Glenn Appleby. I didn't have a chance to work with him too closely given the pretty crazy circumstances of this quarter, um, but I appreciate him reading my thesis towards the end of its process. And finally, thank you to the University Honors Program. I hope you all learned something from this presentation and take care.